Hi, welcome to Data Engineering. So today we are going to discuss about Cassandra peer-to-peer. -peer. Cassandra peer-to-peer -peer and Cassandra types of nodes. Cassandra types of nodes that we have. Okay. So before getting into this topic, if you want to uh, get the complete Cassandra video, I have uh, given the playlist link in the description box of this video where you can get the complete uh, Cassandra videos. And also I have shared the playlist link for the big data related videos also. So where you can find Spark, Hive, Hadoop videos and all those stuff. Okay, let's jump into the topic. So we have generally two types of cluster. For example, if someone asks you like, what is the cluster type of Cassandra? So the answer is peer to peer. So there is two types of cluster. So as I already told you, like we have master slave and peer to peer. So if you take master slave architecture, right? So you will have one master and then multiple slaves. And this is how your Hadoop and Spark works, right? So the, the two major leading technology in big data is master slave. That is Hadoop and Spark. So whereas if you see here, everything is single point of communication. So master node is the point of communication. So slave node between, they don't have any connection between them. So the complete information slave to master, master to slave only. So slave sends the heartbeat to master and slave to slave, there is no heartbeat. For example, if the third node goes down, one the first node and second node never comes to know that is the third node is down, but master comes to know. So all the details are stored in the master. So when there is an SPOC, for sure there will be an SPOF called single point of failure. So when what happened if master goes down? But with respect to Hadoop and Spark, we have an overcome. There is a solution to fix this. So they have more than one master concept. When the active master is gone, you can have the passive master as an active. But the point is, at any given point of time, you should have only one master. All the communication should go via only master. Whether it is one master or you have an alternate master, but the communication should go always, it is an SPOC. Okay. So, but when you take Cassandra, it is completely in peer to peer. That is, there is no master, no slave concept. Okay. So, each and every node act like a friends. So, they, they didn't have like, there is no single point of communication and there is no single point of failure. So, that is a great advantage of peer to peer uh, cluster type actually. So, Cassandra comes under peer to peer. So, each and every node shares their status, the heartbeats and everything. For example, so we have one, two, three, four nodes. If something happened to the second node, the remaining three nodes come to know that the second node is dead. But in master slave, it is not like that. So this is the very great advantage that we have. So I, I'll, I'll again come back to this peer to peer. Now let's see the types of nodes that you have. So you have like you have individual machines and this individual machines are called nodes and group of node is called a cluster. OK, this is a general terminology, right? So types of node, for example, if you take Hadoop, there is master node, slave node. And if you take Spark, we have master node and worker node like that. What are all the nodes type we have in? Cassandra. So in Cassandra, we have two types of nodes, which is called Cassandra node. Each and every node in Cassandra cluster is called a Cassandra node. And there is one more called coordinator node. So coordinator, I'll tell you what is this coordinator node. Okay. So imagine uh, if you want to send a read or write request. So you are sending a read or write request in Hadoop. The, the, the request goes to master node. That is the name node always, right? Any read request, write request, or if you want to send any job request, everything goes to master node only. Right. But when, when it comes to peer to peer, you can get a question. So when in peer to peer, if I send a write request, write request, so into which node it goes? Because you said there is no master, no slave. Then how come uh, it sends the request to which node? So that is a question here. Right. So in Cassandra, each and every node in the cluster can handle your write request and read request. That means now I'm Gautam, I'm sending an write request. So any node can take care of it. For example, my write request goes to second node. It can. So internally, Cassandra will take care of it. Or there is an option for you to enable. For example, you have 100 Cassandra nodes. Admin can do this. Out of 100, you can give 10 node as a uh, node for handling the request. Okay. For example, first node, seventh node, 58th node, 47th node, and then 99th node. Like that, you can decide some 10 nodes which can actually process your read or write request. You can decide. Or if you are not doing any such thing, any node from the Cassandra can able to take your read and write request. Any node. So Cassandra internal, internally, it, it does the job. So the node which takes care of your read request or write request or any request, that is called a coordinator node. 
the node that actually takes care of your write request the node that actually takes care of your read request is called a coordinator node and do i uh, really come to know which node is actually processing my request no it is not required you don't want to worry about or you don't want to uh, know about which node is actually processing your read or write that internally takes care but you need to know so at least one node in, in your Cassandra cluster will act as a coordinator node for you. For example, there's one more person. He's doing some read request. So his name is Saravanan. Okay, so now this request can go to any node. For example, it is going for fourth node. So for Saravanan, the read request is processed by fourth node. So for Saravanan, the fourth node is actually the coordinator node. Now there is one more person name called John. He is doing a write request. That request comes to second node again. So same node can handle more than one request also. Okay, so for John, second node is actually a coordinator node. As I told you already, as a developer, I don't want to know about which node is actually processing my request. That is not required. But we need to know because the one question always people used to get in peer-to-peer, -peer, which node is actually taken care of the request because there is no master. Any node can take care. Okay, so now how come the read request happens? What happens if it failed in between and how the replication works or how the write request happens? So this, this separate architectures are there. I will explain you in the upcoming video. So this video, I just wanted to explain you what is the cluster type of Cassandra and what is the advantage of it and what are all the types of node that we have in Cassandra. Okay, so we can get into the remaining topics in the next video. So I have, as I already told you, I have given the playlist link in the description box of this video where you can find the complete Cassandra videos. Also, I have shared the playlist link for big data videos as well, where you can find all the complete big data related videos. Thanks for watching. If you really like this video, please do share with your friends and colleagues and please do subscribe channel. Thanks for watching.